Good evening, everybody, and welcome all of you to the 71st live webinar on orthopedic principles. Our guest faculty today is Associate Professor Chayanan Antong from Tamasat University, Thailand. Dr. Chayanan was appointed at Tamasat University as a consultant in orthopedic in 2010 and foot and ankle surgeon in 2013, following fellowships in Fukuoka, Japan, Duke University, and at New York University, United States. His clinical practice focused on ankle osteoarthritis, ankle replacement, foot and ankle arthroscopy, and foot and ankle deformity correction. His research interests are ankle osteoarthritis, osteochondral lesion of the talus, 2D and 3D study of the talus, and outcome measures in foot and ankle. He is a member of the APOA foot and ankle section. He was chosen as an AOFAS traveling fellow in 2017, and in 2018, he reserved the AOFAS research grant from the American Orthopedic Foot and Ankle Society. So today it's my honor to introduce you to Dr. Chayanan Antong for his presentation on total talar processes replacement and 3D technology in foot and ankle surgery. Over to you, Chayanan. Okay, thank you very much, um, Professor Kobalan. And um, it's my honor to uh, join this webinar and thank you very much for the invitation. This is the outline of my talk today. Um, it's about the introduction, the 3D application in foot and ankle surgery, cases, study, and conclusion. For the 3D technology, nowadays we have um, several um, programs in the computer to create the three dimensional um, device, and you can design it and you can uh, print it and produce it to help for the Foot and ankle surgery. This is one example that I and my colleagues, Dr. Bowen Tada Dontip, um, designed the Super Malula Osteotomy Jig, as you can see here, based on the 3D CT uh, DICOM files that we convert to the 3D file, as you can see here. And this is the case for demonstration. We did not do the real osteotomy, but just to make the design concept, as you can see here. And then we can make the osteotomy template and attach to the, um, the bone like this. And you can uh, predict that you can change the alignment, how, how many degrees. And this is the um, good concept of the 3D design um, for the foot and ankle surgery. Actually, you can uh, learn it more and you can produce it also. And let's get to the case, um, a patient, uh, a 25-year-old male patient with severe traumatic loss of the entire talus. The initial treatment were performed in the local hospital, such as the debridement and joint spanning external fixation. And this is uh, his the tibial platform, and you can see the large organ wound over here, and he lost the talus from the traffic accident on the road. And for the definitive treatment, the local hospital sent this patient to see me, and what will be the, the option for him if this is your patient? So for the X-ray, you can see that there is no, <clears throat> almost all, uh, all telas has been gone on the road. And this is the CT of uh, this patient. And he did not pick the telas up to the hospital. So in this case, he's quite young and he did not want the fusion. So I decided to do the total tela prosthesis replacement. And uh, we use the custom-made uh, tailor prosthesis for this patient. And it is um, the process. I use the three-dimensional CT imaging of the contralateral talus with the computer graphics, or you can say like a computer edit design or CAD to, um, to do the Miller chain from the contralateral talus to be the ipsilateral talus or the inter side. And then we produce it using the material um, from the medical grade but all compatible stainless steel in this case. And the later case, we use the titanium. So before we uh, produce the implant, we send the catabolic um, telas to the, the, our engineer to learn that what should be the real geometry and shape of the telas. And the engineer will convert the DICOM file from the CT uh, from, of the contralateral telas and make the Miller technique 
to the ipsilateral telus that we want. And you can measure the geometry or the size, and you can check the shape of the telar prothesis that you will produce it later. And you can see the uh, number one is the, the length of the telar dome, and the number two is the width of the telar dome. And I study the profile of the, uh, this geometry by the number one divided by the number two length. And we found that this ratio from our technique was in accordance with the previous studies results. So this evidence is confirmed the anatomy design of the total tail hypothesis in our patient. For the protocol, when I saw the injury or disease that we need the tail hypothesis replacement, uh, I will send the CT of the contralateral telus and uh, I will let the, my engineer to do the segmentation, which means the conversion of the dicom phi of the CT uh, to be the 3D file. Then you can do the Miller technique or whatever by the computer edit, edit design program. You can check the size and you can adjust the shape of the telas. Also, you can do the 3D printing to check the size and the shape of the telas. When you have the adequate data and you satisfy with that, you can go on for the prothesis production. This is the CNC technique, which is the computer numerical control uh, milling. Uh, based on the 3D file. And you can see that uh, you will have the prothesis from this technique. And later on, you can do the implantation after the sterilization of the prothesis. And for the practice management, uh, in my, my routine practice, when I saw the patient like this, as such as the telar loss or vascular necrosis of the telus, uh, that you cannot uh, reconstruct it anymore, or the tumor of the telus, um, I will do the distraction first for two to three weeks to keep the space over here at the TBO talo calconeal area. Um, this technique will help you to implant, to make the implantation of the telar prothesis easier because you can keep the space for a while. And the time for the distraction is around two to three weeks. And during this time, you can produce the prothesis as I mentioned before. And after that, you can do the implantation plus or minus uh, Talectomy in terms of AV, vascular necrosis or AVN or wide section of the tumor. And of course, following the debridement of the patient with the open injury. And when I made the, uh, made the implantation of the telar prothesis to my patient, you can see that the shape and the size is quite good in this patient. And this is the images of the prothesis. At three months after the surgery, he recovered quite well, as you can see here. And at 17 months, he can walk without pain and uh, he had a satisfied out satisfactory outcome. And for the updated case series, I performed eight patients with the total Taylor prothesis replacement. Um, many of them have the injury, as you can see here, and some patients have the tumor, uh, the giant cell tumors. And this is the case, a uh, recurrent giant cell tumor um, from other country. She went to see me and I performed the uh, talectomy and Y resection of the tumor with my tumor uh, orthopedic colleague. And I performed the color prothesis replacement in this patient. You can see the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion is quite good in this patient at the follow up around 11 months. Uh, following uh, this presentation, I will um, present the advanced concepts and technique in the total tala replacement. The first concern is about the sizing template. Um, based on the size of the contralateral telas in my cohort, I found the imperfect size as 25% of uh, my patients. Uh, I, I, th I think that uh, why we have the, some imperfect size from the contralateral telas and I found that uh, from the, my latest cadaveric study uh, demonstrated that uh, there, was, there were the differences of the telar geometric profiles between the left and right telar in terms of the telar dome height, the telar width. And this, the, this is the problem that when we use the contralateral telas, sometimes we can find uh, some mismatch of the telas uh, telar prothesis based on the size of the contralateral telas. 
as you can see the details in my publication right here. And I think uh, this is to need the further study about how to make the more uh, similar size uh, of the Taylor prothesis for the aiming Taylor's or the injured Taylor's at the disease side or the injured side. And the second concern is about the stability of the Taylor prothesis. In my first case and my early case, I found a wireless tilting of the Taylor prothesis, as you can see here, and it may be asymptomatic. But um, I think ongoing development should uh, correct this issue because the stability is quite important for the Taylor, Taylor prothesis. So I create the ligament attachment hole in the later versions, as you can see here in this picture. And then uh, we, I use the hole here for the anterior deep deltoid ligament, and this hole is for the ATFL ligament on the lateral side. And I, recon I reconstruct the ATFL or anterior talofibular ligament using biotinodesis screw and the suture tape, as you can see here, to reconstruct ATFL ligament. And this um, anatomic footprint was adapted um, on each side from uh, For the construction, morning, it is checking inside, and yeah, that the dorsiflexion is quite good, and plantar flexion is quite good also, and it's quite stable. And this is the subtalar motion is quite good. And the Wallace and Walgast color tilting test are quite good, quite uh, satisfying in this page in the patient with the um, ATFL reconstruction. And also the entry adorable test that you can see here is quite stable. This is the shaking, it was the shaking under the C arm. And this is the patient who had the ATFL reconstruction in my later version of the prothesis replacement. You can see this is the right side of the angle with ATFL reconstruction with my um, mention technique. And he can jump and he can walk quite well after the surgery. Okay, and uh, issue number three, is this the last concern? It's about the material. Nowadays, we have the total Taylor prothesis from several materials like this. The alumina ceramic from Takakura and team, the titanium from um, my technique and also stainless steel from my technique and the uh, Hanung Lo technique. But uh, we have no consensus that what is the material of choice to, to be the Taylor prothesis. And we need a further study nowadays um, I have the ongoing finite element analysis study uh, to check what material should be the material of choice in terms of the total tele prothesis, as you can see uh, in this uh, example. For the review of literature, um, Hanung Lo and Hanung Lo uh, found that early prothesis failure as 15.2% from these causes, but uh, he used the Taylor, they used the Taylor body prothesis is not the total Taylor prothesis. And Taniguchi also um, proposed about the Taylor body prothesis. However, uh, they, uh, he, Taniguchi and the team proposed later about the total Taylor prothesis pro provide a better result than Taylor body prothesis. And they recommended the total Taylor prothesis uh, instead of the Taylor body prothesis. And this is the summary of my uh, prothesis and other prothesis, as you can see here. So for the conclusions, artificial telas with our development by three-dimensional CT and computer-aided design is provided to be anatomic and biomechanic designs via several parameters as shown. This prothesis provided satisfactory outcomes um, for the treatment of total or severe telar loss in a short-term follow-up. I emphasize that uh, anatomic design is, um, I think it is the must 
for this prosthesis and also the stability is also needed in the, this prosthesis replacement also. Ongoing development in each, in each aspect is needed with the longer term study to prove the utility of this kind of prosthesis. And these are the references of my presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. Uh, Chanan, uh, thank you for that very nice presentation and on a very important and upcoming area of interest that is use of uh, 3D technology and uh, creation of uh, customized implants. So there are a couple of questions that have come up. Uh, one is uh, how long have you been your study? I mean, what is the uh, follow up? What, okay. is the, what is the outcome? Like? What is the early outcome? Uh, what is the midterm outcome? Uh, do you have long term outcome? And to yeah. what length do you have long term outcomes? Okay, um, my uh, nowadays I per I perform the prosthesis uh, since um, five years ago. Uh, sorry, around um, six years ago. And my first patient has the six years of the uh, prosthesis replacement. And he now still use his uh, activity daily living and no need for the prosthesis um, revision and no the complication like a um, periposthetic fracture. And later on uh, for the eight patients, the mean follow-up is around uh, 18 months. 18 months is around uh, one year and a half. And all, all of them have no revision in terms of the um, secondary osteoarthritis of the ankle or the subtalar joint or talonavicular joint. And um, just one case uh, has the peripositic fracture because he has the new traffic injury and is not uh, involved with the prosthesis that much. And other case, one case have the some instability, I think, of the prosthesis, and she had uh, some pain at the subtalar joint. By the way, she's still mobile and she still can walk with the gait aid. Okay, yes. and how many cases of total talar replacement? Now I have eight patients. Eight how cases. Many? Eight. Eight. Eight patients. Okay, so that's a pretty good number for a really new emerging technology. Yes. Uh, the other one is uh, do you think uh, this technology can be extended to other bones as well? Oh, yes. Is it, that is a good question. Um, I think uh, this technique uh, can be adapted for other bones, um, such as the, I, I do one case uh, for the metacarpal, metacarpal because first metacarpal because the, the patient have the tumor from one hyperendu uh, disease and, uh, and other patient, um, I think I, other, other bone that you, you can use, for example, the um, maybe like a, the radio head or the customized radio head prosthesis. Um, but there is some details of each bone that you need to make it anatomically mimic, mimicking as possible and also the stability like a ligament attachment for that bone. The other thing is uh, the material that you use because see, when, whenever you talk about the material, it should be in close compatibility with bone. That is your elastic modulus or Young's modulus should be as close as bone and that's going to be the best material. So what do you think in uh, these processes, the mater ideal materials, what are the options that you have? Um, the, the, mat the material of choice uh, for me is the titanium uh, because the, as you said about the young modulus, the young modulus of the, the titanium is quite close to the human bone. And I think it can dissipate the load from the tibial platform to the calcaneus and also the Navicula quite easier than, than the, I think than maybe than more than ceramic. But the stainless steel is also the, the good choice and is less, less expensive. I mean, a, a bit cheaper than the uh, titanium. And the good, the good point of the stainless steel is the, they have the, like a, they, they have difficulty, more, more difficult to break. And I think uh, may, may be the, the good choice also. But for me, uh, the titanium uh, is the, the best choice now. And it's lighter than the stainless steel. And the material that you have used is all titanium? Um, I used uh, first 
first four case, I use the stainless steel 316L. 316L is the good choice because uh, it is um, it's difficult to have the, the oxidation. And uh, the last four cases, I use the titanium uh, 64LV. Yeah. Yes. So the first four cases you use stainless steel and the last four yes. cases titanium. Yes, right? yes, yes, that's right. And how many patients have you done a simultaneous conjunct uh, distal tibial replacement? I mean, distal the tibial plafond. Oh, okay. Um, uh, that that is a good question. Uh, actually, uh, I I want to uh, now nowadays I did not do uh, the teleprothesis with the tibial platform replacement now, but I think uh, some case may need it in the future in my my patient if the patient came back with the the wear the wear area at the tibial platform and uh, Taniguchi and team also did it with the ceramic prosthesis. Yeah, already. And uh, there is another material called as tantalum. I'm sure you know about it, this trabecular metal tantalum. These are having very close, their coefficient of elasticity, or Young's model is very close to bone. Do you think that is going to be a better material from in this situation? I agree it's a weight bearing bone. And uh, do you think a tantalum or a trabecular metal would be a good choice? Yes, I think it's possible. I think it's possible, um, especially the, um, uh, if if you want, uh, in in terms of some case that uh, you want to use the titanium uh, tantalum or the tubular metal to imprint in the bone, for example, if the subtalar joint is not so good, you can use the uh, I think you can use the tubular metal or tantalum at the interface with the calcaneus, but the wearing the wearing surface should should be the polished one like a titanium or the stainless steel. I, I think um, that 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 is like a hybrid hypothesis. It, it is possible. Yeah. Okay, I think there are no more questions. And thank you, Shannon, for spending your valuable time with us. It was a very very important talk because this is going to have a lot of implications to the future. Three D technology and use of material to replace. I mean, body parts. I mean, of course, with respect to bone is what we talk about. Thank you so much for being with us, and uh, it was very nice listening to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for the invitation. What do you have? Thank you. Bye. Bye.